We are barely fresh from rhapsodizing about the first set of James Webb images, yet here we are, announcing that another, more powerful telescope is well on its way. Step aside, James Webb, because Elon Musk just put pen to paper on a lucrative deal with NASA that could see SpaceX pocket up to $255 million for the launch and delivery of the highly anticipated Grace Roman Telescope. Now, I know what you're thinking. Could this be the telescope that dethrones James Webb, even before it clocks a full year in space? Or will this telescope be designed for other explorative purposes? In the discerning words of Neil deGrasse Tyson, let's explore, shall we? On July 19th, SpaceX bagged the NLS-2, or NASA Launch Services 2, contract, which means that SpaceX will enter an indefinite agreement with NASA to deliver as many payloads and projects to space. This includes the Grace Roman Telescope, which is scheduled to fly atop the Falcon Heavy sometime in October of 2026. The launch will reportedly take place at the Kennedy Space Center, Launch Complex 39A, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Currently, the Falcon Heavy flaunts the title of the most powerful operational rocket in the world. It boasts three Falcon 9 core engines that are absolute beasts, totaling up to 27 Merlin engines that deliver a whopping 5.1 million pounds of thrust during liftoff. Add this to the fact that the Falcon Heavy has recorded three successful test flights, and it's a no-brainer why NASA went to SpaceX. We also have to remember that the Grace Roman Telescope is no pushover. Reportedly weighing 4.63 tons, only a stallion like the Falcon Heavy could dare to carry this back-breaking astronomical machine pitted against the effects of gravity to its desired destination, which in this case will be the second Lagrange point, situated approximately 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. But before we even get into all the nitty-gritty and technical stuff, let's have a little history lesson on the Grace Roman Telescope, shall we? Plans for the telescope were first released in 2010, when the project went by the acronym WFIRST, or the Wide Field Infrared Survey Telescope. However, the death of veteran astronomer Nancy Grace Roman in 2018 inspired NASA to rename it the Grace Roman Telescope, in honor of Nancy's outstanding contributions to the science and study of astronomy. According to NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, the Grace Roman Telescope is designed to take humanity deeper down the rabbit hole, narrowing it down to three fundamental themes of the universe, dark energy, dark matter, and exoplanets. Pay attention now, because we're going into the technical stuff. So this telescope is, essentially, designed to last five years in outer space. It will be equipped with a primary mirror that will be 2.4 meters in diameter, roughly the same size as the primary mirror of the Hubble Space Telescope. But unlike Hubble, the Roman Space Telescope will be fitted with two major instruments, the Wide Field Instrument and the Coronagraph. Now, the inclusion of this new Wide Field Instrument will be groundbreaking. According to reports, this instrument will have a field of view nearly 200 times greater than that of Hubble, and 100 times greater than James Webb, enabling scientists to capture more sky with a smaller observation window. This means that we could soon be measuring light from over a billion galaxies over the telescope's lifetime. Not only will we see so many galaxies, but we could also locate exoplanets within the Milky Way, in the ballpark of about 2600. So I bet you're wondering, how will the Grace Roman locate so many exoplanets? planets. Well, this is where the secondary instrument, the coronagraph, comes in. This nifty device will carry out high contrast imaging and spectroscopy, enabling us to discover dozens of exoplanets in our galaxy, especially planets that have a striking similarity in geological and atmospheric makeup to planet Earth. Here's the science behind how it works. Usually, light from an exoplanet is much fainter than that of its host star, which is the star that it revolves around much like our sun, by roughly 100 million times. This is largely the case because most of the exoplanets we see are through reflected starlight. That's why for any observatory located on Earth's surface or lower orbit, it's practically impossible to capture the light from an exoplanet. That's one of the reasons why the Grace Roman will be deployed on the second Lagrange point. Lagrange points are areas in space where the gravitational forces from the sun and and the Earth equal each other, causing an object within a Lagrange point to remain in position. If it wasn't for the presence of Lagrange points in space, can you imagine the amount of fuel that NASA would have to burn just to maintain a telescope? They would also have to launch multiple fuel loads worth hundreds of millions of dollars every month just to keep the telescope in position, not to mention blowing through additional funds to repair any potential faults and errors. Launching a telescope would be a wasteful and expensive endeavor. This is the same reason why James Webb is located at a Lagrange point. The Romans 
coronagraph instrument will be the first in space capable of directly capturing mature gas giant exoplanet systems, such as Saturn and Jupiter, using reflected starlight. Such discoveries could forge a path for NASA to discover planets similar to our own. As mentioned earlier, the Grace Roman will focus on three fundamental areas of study, dark energy, dark matter, and exoplanets. With dark energy, the Roman will be equipped to measure factors like the equation and time evolution of dark energy. This will help us finally understand questions that have puzzled pioneers of dark energy like Albert Einstein and Adam Rees. Questions such as, is dark energy a cosmological constant? Using spectroscopy, the Roman will also measure redshifts, or displacements, in galaxies across defined parameters. Measuring such distortions will enable us to precisely calculate the distances of galaxies that are thousands of light years away. As for dark matter, the Roman will investigate the weak gravitational lensing effects of this bizarre material, and how distant galaxies are warped in small clumps of dark matter. Using the Roman's wide field instrument, scientists will have the power to measure and record both the normal matter as well as dark matter of galaxies in the hundreds of millions. These observations will be critical in helping us understand how dark matter has influenced the creation and evolution of stars and galaxies as a function of cosmic time. If we can observe galaxy formation taking place very early on in terms of cosmic history, we can determine if dark matter is, in fact, made of heavy particles that quickly clump together. On the other hand, if these particles exhibit a much slower growth in clumping, this could mean that large-scale structures in the universe are established over a long time frame. And as such, dark matter consists of light, fast-moving particles. With such powerful information in the palm of our hands, we could finally reconstruct the history of galaxies and clusters influenced by the power of dark matter. Scientists will also determine viable particles here on Earth that could be used in the creation of dark matter. How amazing is that? And in the case of exoplanets, the Roman will deploy the coronagraph's time series microlensing imaging to observe the stars in the Milky Way and reconstruct the distribution of exoplanets, especially Earth-like masses that could, potentially, be our future habitats. The coronagraphic instrument of the Roman will also spearhead future missions to detect signs of life on exoplanets that share a similar atmosphere to Earth. The coronagraph system will also be capable of imaging planets that share striking similarities to other planets in our solar system. We could, for the first time in aerospace history, record the photometric properties of many Neptunes, many Jupiters, and many Earths distributed throughout our galaxy. In fact, the Kepler mission had initially confirmed that such planets are the most widely distributed in our galaxy. A majority of the missions carried out by the Roman will focus on general astrophysics, which will be carried out by using the wide field instrument. This will enable the Roman to mainly carry out wide field imaging and spectroscopy for several studies. From the look of things, the Roman is not going to be in direct competition with the James Webb. Rather, the two instruments will be used in tandem to provide us with a more vivid and concise image of the universe. They could also provide us with a clearer path to planets that are nearby, planets that possess an atmosphere conducive for human habitation. When all is said and done, it's an exciting time to be alive, especially if you have a strong interest in astronomy. We could be gearing up for some of the most spectacular images of our galaxy, not to mention the universe and beyond. Are you pumped up about the Roman telescope? If so, let us know in the comments section below what you think of its 2026 launch and what questions you would like it to answer for us in the next few years. For now, thanks for watching, and until next time, welcome to the future.